All right, the board meeting of the Board of Education for March 17, 2020 is called to order. For tonight's meeting, any, any item that will be voted on has been posted as required by state law. This meeting is being audio streamed live on channel 28 and will be replayed throughout the next two weeks. Please check the district website for replay times. This meeting is also being audio streamed live on our PPS TV services website. Um, good evening. Thank you everyone for making yourselves available at home this evening on this very strange weekend. Uh, the health and safety of our students, families, and employees is, of course, our top priority. Because of that, tonight's board meeting will be streamed live with each of us, uh, board members and staff, attending by phone. General public comment and comment on items requiring board action have been submitted to the board by email. Uh, just re a reminder, participants, um, please stay muted unless you uh, have something to say. I'd like to take this moment uh, to acknowledge the incredible efforts of our staff and district leaders to navigate this unprecedented health crisis for our city and what this means to our students. Superintendent, I know um, you'll probably share a bit with us in your report later about your efforts today, uh, checking in on several of our food distribution sites and the incredible efforts of staff to pull that together, both um, pulling the meals together, but also making sure that we had um, bundles of, of books and things that can keep our students busy and learning in this time. So um, we look forward to hearing a little bit more about what that looked like today. Um, we know there were 15 sites across the, the district, which included both meals and curriculum packets. Um, at this time, the board will vote on its business agenda. Board members, are there any items you would like to pull for discussion? We can set those aside for discussion at the end of the meeting. Ms. Bradshaw or Roseanne, do we have any changes to the business agenda? Resolution 6086 was withdrawn. Did you, did you say 6086? Did I get that right? Yes, and it has been posted on the website. Okay, great. Uh, do I have a motion to set on a second to adopt the business agenda? So moved. Second. Director Brim Edwards moves, and I believe Director Scott seconds the adoption of the business agenda. Uh, is there any discussion? The board will now vote on the business agenda. All in favor, please indicate by saying yes. 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 All opposed, please indicate by saying no. Any abstentions? How does the cat vote? The business agenda is approved by a vote of seven to zero with student representative lateral voting. Yes. All right. Superintendent Guerrero, would you like to give us a brief report of recent activities? Superintendent, are you there? All right. I'm present. Uh, thank you, Chair Constam, for acknowledging uh, and other board members who have shared your appreciation for staff during this unprecedented time for truly stepping up to uh, the occasion. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, long days uh, and even the weekends. Um, I do want to report out that uh, today, as our, uh, our second day of school closure, uh, our nutrition staff. Uh, supported by other central staff. Uh, we're out at 15 locations around the city. Uh, a total of 2,800 plus meals were distributed uh, to families who approached one of those uh, meal locations. Uh, they were very thankful uh, for uh, the food. Uh, we took the opportunity to share with students and their parents uh, learning materials uh, and books uh, so that our students could engage in some learning while home. Uh, so this has been a, a rapidly evolving situation. It really is an unprecedented crisis, um, but weighing on senior leadership's mind right now uh, that is just coming to the broader public's attention, uh, including to our board, is just prior to this board meeting commencing tonight, uh, the governor of Oregon issued an executive order, which extends the school closures until April 28th. 
Uh, that is uh, big news, obviously. Uh, staff is absorbing all aspects of that executive order. Uh, it issues a number of directives for school districts uh, to implement. Uh, and so staff is quickly digesting what that means for us here in Portland Public Schools. Obviously, um, I'm vocalizing this for the first time via our board meeting. So uh, our families and students can expect uh, a broad communication immediately following this board meeting to get the word out so that there is that understanding. Our staff, uh, as attentive as they have been to date, uh, we really need to scale up uh, some additional thinking about how we support remote learning if the extension now looks like it's going to go through April 28th. So I know this will come as news uh, to, to everyone um, and really has a shifting our mindset about uh, how to best support our students during this, this time. Um, so that, that's sort of the big news weighing on us right now. But I also want to extend how public or the broader community's understanding um, how diligent uh, staff has been at all levels of the organization. Uh, I want to appreciate all the community members, PTA members, parent leaders, uh, business folks who have stepped up to say um, we want to help. Um, and we've had plenty of offers for, for volunteerism, and we are appreciative of that. Uh, we are keeping folks informed through our district website. Uh, opportunities, which we'll continue to add to where folks can get involved. I want to encourage the broader public while we're providing breakfast and lunch at various school locations uh, to support their local food banks if they're so inclined is another way to keep our community uh, provisioned. Um, I want to also put in a plug for other folks uh, who want to give in a different way. Uh, the fund for Portland Public Schools is up and taking uh, contributions as well, which uh, we will think of ways for directing those funds to, to folks most impacted uh, during this time. Um, so really, I'm going to keep my report brief, uh, but that is, I think, uh, really uh, important, serious news that we're learning about now. Um, and uh, the broader community can, can expect uh, continued real-time communications uh, about what that means for, for our students and families. Superintendent, can you give us a sense of the, the numbers of kids and families that showed up today for meal distribution? And was it um, was there much variation by sites? I think we saw some variation. It varied anywhere from 75 meals at one site to close to 200 at another site. Uh, the sum total of 2,800 uh, for a first day of meal distribution. Uh, we think not unlike when we normally do summer meals, uh, there's a little bit of an uptake as more word of mouth uh, and folks uh, uh, start to come back uh, each with each day. So uh, we'll make adjustments as we take a look at where we are over the next few days. Uh, definitely want folks to understand that that is available for for our students. Uh, anybody from the ages of one through 18 can come by and grab and go fashion, take a breakfast and a lunch if they so desire. Uh, and we are making those educational materials available uh, and gifting those to our students uh, if they're there as well. That's great. Um, all right, we'll move on. Thank you very much. We just have a couple of pieces of business that we wanted to accomplish tonight, which is um, basically to get these first readings done of a couple of policies that have been in motion. So um, Rita, can you please uh, introduce the first reading of the nutrition services meal pricing and purchasing policy? Rita? Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, these are uh, a technical fix to our policy to bring us in compliance with um, a statute that was passed in 2018. So it's um, it, it's not particularly, uh, I don't know, it's pretty easy, I think. Boilerplate. Does anyone have any questions about this? 
Okay, the proposed policy amendments will be posted on the board website and the public comment period is 21 days with the last day to comment being April 7th. The board will hold a second reading at our April 7th meeting. All right, the next item we had is a second first reading of the district funds for purchase of gifts, meals, and refreshments policy. Can you lead us in that process, Rita? Uh, yeah, this is, um, these are some policy changes that um, are in response to the findings of the Secretary of State audit that happened last year. Um, they are, um, they're pretty much reflective of changes in practice that have already occurred um, on the district side. Uh, and they are, um, I think, pretty standard in terms of expectations around um, use of uh, district funded meals and um, limitations on kind of expectations around um, the use of district funds. All right, any questions from anybody? Okay, anything anything else for the good of the order? That is our business for this evening. I suppose I should repeat with regard to that policy that this will as well be posted on the website. The public comment period again is 21 days. Last day to comment being April 7th and we will have our second reading on April 7th. Okay, everybody, staff and board, um, stay well, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take yeah. care of just a big thank you. Big thank you to our staff. Find with you. Excuse me, Director Bailey. Just a big thank you to our staff. Indeed, yes. yes agree. Agreed. Yeah. And uh, yes, indeed. All right, we'll we'll find our way together. All right, thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.